shit, let me out of my summer. Oh, Heavenly Father. We do pray, I do pray. I pray. I look to you and things of wealth and things of wisdom and things of truth and things of honesty, prosperity, life, love, relationship, glory, praise and honour. I fall short of the mark. And I'm sorry for that. Uh, I know that you know that I'm human and you know that in that there is frailty and there is inability to be perfect and right and true. I don't follow after and according to my type like the rest of creation, like, like, like the birds that land on the branches and know the branches won't break. Yeah, I come before you humbly and hopefully and prayerfully because your word declares that your son came to the earth and was born and lived and ministered and was betrayed and was crucified that he bore the burden of the sin of the world including my sins to that cross that as I acknowledge that I may be forgiven and set on my feet again on the rock and stand as a child as a servant as a priest as a called and chosen ambassador for the things of the kingdom of light to speak and share in grief and joy and abundance and in solitude the things of the kingdom for your glory and grace and name forever amen greetings and sabbath greetings as you can probably tell from the timber and the the, the content of that prayer I am, um, well I have found it difficult to come here, to come here, to come here to the place where uh, God blessed me with a chair, to a place that God blessed me in peace and solitude and midst of a big city, to come here in a place where I, uh, God blessed me with a, with a scooter that's 200 metres away which, which allows me to get here easier than ever before more easier than it did for a long time for six, seven months and, and I come less and I might say and God might say to me now well it was winter and it was raining and this place was a mud pool yeah I find with some fear, some, some troubling to my spirit and soul. I've not posted a photograph of my Sabbath walks since the beginning of 5784, which is in October, the Hebrew calendar year. When previously, the previous 5783 and then when they're still counting the um, Roman calendar years two years three years previously to this I've posted my Sabbath photographs I've still taken some but they've been less and it concerns me it consternates me in my walk and way and expression in my attitude a problem 
the nation. This nation in which I, I, I live, it's been shared with some brothers and sisters in Christ. There's a there's a very heavy blanket over the things of the kingdom. Not that God isn't working, not that God isn't in all things and through all things. He is a very heavy blanket, something which inhibits the connection, which, 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 sorry, <laughs> which makes the connection all the more glorious for its revelation. <sighs> It's not that angry opposition that I've experienced in other nations. Whether it be from, from a, a lack of knowledge or, 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 a, or a partial knowledge. But it's not through an ignorance. It's just a heaviness, a darkness. A, Shadow, <laughs> something which can be blown away. Thank you, Lord. God, who is God, is sovereign. Our God is sovereign over all the earth. There's no part of it that's hidden. There's no person. He doesn't know their exact whereabouts, the thoughts, the number of hairs upon their head. By him we are fearfully and wonderfully made. One of the great counters, or the, one of the great counters to the idea of, of, of abortion as, a, as an acceptable thing in the case of viable fetuses is the fact that the Bible says that God is with us in our mother's womb. He is knitting us together. It's that presence like that, you can come into the presence of God in the in the in the temple. You can come into the presence of God in the end times when God is before us, and we are in the presence of God when we're in our mother's womb. This is what's so vile about abortion. We're actually reaching into that space and place with tools to cut and chop. God's creation as he creates it into pieces. And even in the definition of viable, I've you know, here testimony, I can give testimony. And the advice has been to, to abort because of possible problems where a miracle has occurred and life has come forth and that life viable and growing and perfect and even in the cases of, of disability and dysfunction that God doesn't make mistakes that in the lives that they lead and the lives that they affect there is growth and truth and peace and overcoming. This is his universe. We are his handiwork. Should we not trust him? And yes, we have the fall, we have the difficulties, challenges. In that, as believers, should we not trust him? And it's one of the things that's moved me to come today in this, this new Roman year. No, I don't, not that that's relevant. But in this time, 
in this time after a period of reflection and rest and recovery and you know what's going wrong what's what's not right and it's like oh I don't go on I don't keep to those Sabbath blessings I don't I, I miss the communion with God himself And even coming to deliver this message, I've come straight from the bike, set the camera up, started to preach, and I've really spent time with God, which is which is what the Sabbath walks were about, or what I was blessed in, with, corralled, held, taught. Sorry, Lord. in a rush to get things done our short lives which are plenty long enough to do all the things that you've called us to do your eyes on the sparrow and you are far and above all things how do we fail and fall before you like wheat, like grass. I pray that you're well. I pray that you know that you're loved. I pray that you're held in his bosom. And if you're not, that there may be yet time for you to be there. That this message might be something which stirs you closer. to the shadow of his wings to lean against his bosom his breast to be held to be to know that you adored desired cared for provided for not alone not lacking in anything <laughs> Brother, sister, friend, family member, church member, stranger, enemy. The message today is I love you. God loves you. in my mind to come and talk about the church of Carpe Cruxes establish its foundation make an explanation of what it is and what it's not I hate God says in Amos 5 I spurn your pilgrim feasts. I will not delight in your sacred ceremonies. When you present your sacrifices and offerings, I will not accept them, nor look on the buffaloes of your shared offerings. Spare me the sound of your songs. I cannot endure the music of your lutes. Let justice roll on like a river, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Did you bring me sacrifices and gifts, you people of Israel, those forty years in the wilderness? No. But now you shall take up the shrine of your idol king and the pedestals of your images which you have made for yourselves and I will drive you into exile beyond Damascus. So says the Lord, the God of hosts is his name. The best of our works are as filthy rags before God. And yet, and yet, my
offering, my desire is for them to be acceptable filthy rags. I've moved, been moved to found a church on the basis that from scripture and the Bible, Jesus says when the Son of Man comes will he find faith in all the earth and that as a, as a damning indictment about the reality of what I experience in the church as a believer as a, as a baptized believer of 10 years 12 years it's all over the place and one where people say well, there's no perfect church moved to found the church of Carpet Church Crooks is as a, as a church that can operate within the other churches that people who uh, aspire and assign themselves and commit themselves to this community can also operate and be in, in the other communities as scions, as beacons for right and truthful and upright living and practice of the things of the kingdom. I know the church of Carpe Cruxus won't be unique in that founding principle of wanting to be a true church, the true church, the bride of Christ. And yet also, as they would, I'd say that we live in a time of unique opportunity and vision and ability where that might actually be possible to do that we can communicate and record and share globally quickly and be the church in a way that our filthy rags are acceptable to God that prayerfully over time if the church grow, grows if it's God's will as I said before you need people you need the spirit of God to, to, to found a church if that church grows then may it one day grow to be the bride of Christ that, that he comes for that when he does return there are upturned, holy hands seeking and looking for the things of the kingdom according to his promises, filled with the Holy Spirit and, and reaching out. You know, that, that time when he comes will be a time of great tumult. Satan, Leviathan unleashed upon the earth warring and destroying, trying its best to destroy the saints to breach the defences, the walls of that new Jerusalem, which will fail it utterly. But now is not that time. The, the, the Church of Carpe Cruxis looks towards the unfulfilled prophecies of the Bible and, and in my experience, my discernment of those things and what God has shown me in those things is not something that, that is extra biblical that, that's and this like the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons or the Seventh-day Adventists or the um, Church of Christ scientists this is something that's in there available to see and read uh, uh, speak that, that when we when we, prophecy is impossible to interpret until it's fulfilled it only makes sense. We can, we can, you know, oh look in those general directions. We can even find our place within a particular prophecy if those things are being fulfilled at the time, which is what I'm talking about. But what's still in the future is still unknown. And, and, and finding our place in that, if there's an opportunity, is part of that, you know, we're here, and this is what's going to happen this is what's going to come and we this is what we need to be ready for 
Uh, and, and that's part of this Church of Carpe Cruxis thing. Uh, we, we, we need checkpoints, reformations, times of, 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 of review and clearing out and, and, and going again in the same way that in the first century church we see Paul you know trying to bring that shape keep that shape and, and say no that's not and this is and that's and, and, and trying to keep that flow that allows the Holy Spirit of God to populate that, that thing the people who are in the church that those two things remain so that in that there may be a flow which, which, which pours into the world that changes the world that, 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 that affirms God's principles and truth and that Jesus is his son and that, that the way is open and opens the way and calls and and teaches and accepts and builds and grows because that's the, the, the connection with God that's the right way to live and be I'm on a limited uh, time frame with both uh, um, memory and uh, battery on the camera today and um, that's a lot of ground to cover hey eh? <laughs> especially when already it's been more about experiencing God's blessing and truth and peace and joy and splendor and majesty and glory in my life this Sabbath morning as I come before him in prayer and humility Sing, sing to Jesus. <sighs> Biblical following. The Church of Carpe Cruxis advises reading the Bible in the order that we now know it's been written. If we use research modern research and understanding and apply that to what we know of the bible and the scriptures and the original manuscripts and things like that we can see that, that, that this standard format bible which again has been the subject of wars and, and councils and agreements and disagreements over the 20 centuries since christ's uh, ascension still could do with a tweak <laughs> because it's in the wrong order that's what we say we know that the book of Job should be there's not a lot of change to the Old Testament but the book of Job should be before the book of Genesis and if we place it there the reason for this is if we place it there well, what we see is God's wisdom I believe that if we if we do it in that order we will see God's wisdom it would be better uh, uh, to understand the scriptures and travel through the scriptures in the order that they're written because in doing so we will also see a greater revelation of God's revelation it's God's work after all his inspired handiwork and, and what we've done in the third to the seventh centuries in particular is we've set it in an order that, that, that appeals to men's wisdom rather than set it in an order that it was written because we didn't know and now that we do know and we can make educated guesses that's the kind of thing so example if we bring Job to the front Job as a book uh, introduces us like to the characters that are part of our uh, spiritual and uh, physical landscape that there is a God that there is a court that there are uh, uh, powers and potentates that sit in that court including Satan who is our enemy and how uh, humanity's relationship uh, with that court and powers and the struggle and the, 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 the idea that there's a path, a right way and a wrong way, and then there's you know either side of that path is carnality and legality and 
we are on a you know a tendency a calling to to, to improve ourselves and that's the journey in that improving ourselves we can come into a deeper and closer relationship with God which can ultimately be a permanent relationship with God you know good to know who the players are who the parts are in a story and then we can go into the map Genesis creation where the world came from how God brought about the things and then the histories that, that, that bring about from mankind to the fall and and through there and including in the in the understanding of that is also in the New Testament is is, is some of the what are called apocryphal writings and teachings because these were books that we, we that weren't included because they didn't have the manuscripts of and those manuscripts did exist but they weren't found until sometimes long after the order of the Bible was set so for the New Testament it makes a much more uh, a meaningful impact Paul's letters in the Bible that we read now are actually quite out of order the Gospels we put them together because they're, they're the four snapshots of Jesus's life and yet in their timed writings it would make more sense to have John further in when when it comes to a point where you see that the the, the apostles are dying that the, the disciples of Christ are passing away and this this opportunity to witness to his life is important enough to to, to, to have another go and how that relates back to the letters that have been in between and then to the to the general ongoing relationship to understand Paul in his journeys to understand Paul in his uh, captivity and to understand Paul in, in his final uh, years in, in the harsh captivity of the Maoritan prison uh, and that it contextualizes much more perfectly rightly the, the, the story that's unfolding It's like we've got a shuffled deck, and what we want is a is a deck that's in order, and that's what a, that's what the Church of Car Carpe Crux is. It's not that, it's, that it shouldn't be. A, there's mysteries. There are things that that that, that are for believers and non-believers. That the, 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 there's parts that we, we, we to have access to to gain deeper insight, and that's part and parcel of why it's been held in the way it is. And, yeah, the, the opportunity to, to, to canonize, is that the right word? The scriptures in an order, in a modern, you know, using modern understanding and, 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 and the you know, techniques of, of evaluation to, to see. Things like the book of Maccabees, that the story of, of, the, of, of Judah Maccabees, uh, uh, Revolution and Antiochus Epiphanes is important is actually important to our understanding of of biblical record and biblical truth. Jesus refers to it uh, when you see uh, as part of one of his prophecies when you see the the, the abomination of the uh, um, desolation set up in the temple. That, that's him referring to what Antioch, Antiochus Epiphanes had done. He he went to the feast day, uh, Hanukkah, that would would have would have been associated with the celebration of the retaking of the temple. Yes, we we, we need to look and say, well, the candle lighting story was something that's added centuries later. But the actual story of the of the rededication of the temple of God's deliverance from a few hundred people to against an army of thousands and and in exact fulfilment of prophecy from the book of Daniel. Wow, we need to understand these things, and they're not included in the majority of the Bible. Because, oh, it's not uh, it's not uh, relevant to salvation, which is what the councils decided in the 
six or seven hundred AD. But do we need, that's the kind of thing I believe we need to review. That's the kind of thing. That's that the church, the church that Christ comes for, will 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 read the Bible in it, in in its better its closest form because they won't be held to the teachings of men and the decisions of men that will blind them to truths that maybe fulfill and help people understand exactly what's going on in that way it is vital to people's salvation if it's just a random group of stories which some people profess within the church we, we, we lose that connectedness which shows that it's God's authorship, this is inspired, that God of the heavens has made a work that is, that is alive and powerful and sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, capable of discerning our innermost thoughts and fears, even to the separation of bone from the marrow. That's what this represents. This is our map something that can speak to us and teach us and guide us and keep us on the right path, our compass, our cross, whether it's uh, uh, the, the, the full one of mine stuck to the wall in my home or the, or the gnarly, slightly broken one that I've got in my hand today, this cross is what gives me the right direction, my compass, my ways, always. I must align myself with heaven and seek to, 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 to move side to side the things of my old life in order to open that way and allow God to come and inhabit my life, less of me and more of him that I might experience. This is the, the glory and the wonder, the splendor of salvation, that the, of that transformation of the new life. Experience his life as a spectator, as part of it. I'm not gone, I'm not without free will still. It's incredible. And yet God is in me. That, that, that temple is within me. That, that presence is within me. And, and I can join in with him and walk with him as I accord. I can mature and become, I don't know, better part of him. What's the right word, Lord? I'm still a wretch. That we can celebrate and experience Him more and more. And prayerfully, in congregation, in community, in, in society, as a church, as a body of believers, working together with Christ at the head wow imagine a world populated with people who think like Jesus not just a few and not where the people at the top are corrupted but there's a, there's a, a guardianship there there's a fellowship there that ensures that understanding is, is communicated effectively enough that the, 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 the protective barriers are put in place, the right practices, such as the, the Sabbath message, end of the week, informed by that end of the week, encouraging and building and bringing some focus into the rest of the week for church, but allowing for those congregations and those uh, home fellowships to, to take the direction from the Holy Spirit in order to keep the body strong, the lifeblood is the spirit. This is the change from Daniel 2's statue, which is what, again, the Church of Carpe Cruxis is founded on. That, that place in the Bible comes from that understanding. The prophecy in Daniel 2, Nebuchadnezzar's dream, the statue with the gold head and the silver shoulders and the bronze flanks and the uh, iron legs and the feet of iron and clay. I preach, I witness, I testify to the fact that the iron, the legs of iron, the Rome, Roman Empire ended in the late 1960s, early 1970s when Britain which be, which Rome became which Rome became Britain 
monetary and I've preached about this before the monetary system was still the same the legal system was still the same the language of the of, of legal system was still the same Latin was still uh, leases and legal legal documents were still in Latin up until the 1960s 1970s into the 1980s um, um, Imperial Purple is owned by Cambridge a number of things which point to the fact that it was still Rome. Iron being the, the premium metal of the British Empire. Processing of iron and iron into steel to make ships, machines, engines, you name it. So we see that this continuation of the Rome of Christ Day, the legs that were still there, and Christ didn't fulfill anything in that prophecy. So it's not about Jesus. And what we come to is the feet of iron and clay, and this is the last 50 years, this is where I'm preaching from now. A society that was totally opposed and totally different to the westernized iron society, the Roman society, that's now become an, a, a, an imprint, a perfect imprint, almost, you know, it's better on the surface than that society that it's replacing. And yet you dig underneath and it's, you're not far away from returning back to, to that clay. And, and what the Bible says is these two societies, the west and the east, the, the iron and the clay, the Roman and the Asian, for want of a better word, these two societies, as much as they try and cleave together and do the same things, they won't. This is what the Bible says, they will not cleave. They will not join as, as, as best as the efforts and as much as we want to say, oh, let there be peace in Palestine, let there be peace in Russia and Ukraine, let there be peace between China and America, it won't come about because the Bible says it will not come about. And this is one of the things when we, when we look at the Bible and believe the Bible because it's God's word that it's true that when the Bible says it will not cleave together, it won't. And as much as we try and, and, and go, even go against God's will, we'll fail in that. It's not just that God's deliberately setting himself against us, it's, it's about this is the way it has to be. And that's that fulfilment of prophecies that it, there's an inevitability running through. The same way that all the prophecies that did point to Christ needed to be fulfilled by his betrayal and his death upon a cross. If there was a better way of doing things, God would choose that way. He would direct us and guide us along that way because it's his desire that none should perish, that we should suffer less, not more. But in our rebellious state, in the truth of the way things are, it is, uh, there's an inevitability in the things that must come to pass. The iron and the clay will not cleave together. And then the, the message says that, 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 that a, a, a stone not made of human hands comes from the feet of iron and clay and smashes the feet of iron and clay and proceeds to smash the statue. The upright way that the world has been since the time Nebuchadnezzar through the Assyrians, through the Greeks, through the Romans, and now through this iron and clay, this world will change dramatically. And whether that's by an education system or by the church, what it says then is that that stone grows until it becomes a, a mountain, and then that mountain covers the whole earth. I believe that that is talking about the church of Carpe Cruxes. That the church will rise, this, this, this new understanding church. So it's not changing what's written. It's not extra biblical in terms of what's written. It's something that understands because of that, that, that point, because of that validation in prophecy, 
that we begin to accept the things that it says and that we can't divert or escape or go from the left to the right we can't climb over the wall we can't smash the gates we can't do anything other than, than accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior in order to come into that relationship now here not not just waiting for the future to come but being active in that in all the things whether I'm a Muslim whether I'm a Buddhist whether I'm a Hindu whether I'm a Christian in the church that's all over the place whether I'm an atheist or, or whatever the truth of the matter the truth of the splendor the truth of the glory of God is that he has sent his son that we may be redeemed to him and in that redemption we may have a new life and a new hope and that can be achieved here on earth that his kingdom may come here that we might accommodate 7 billion people 10 billion people 20 billion people, 100 billion people adequately with the resources that are given us in this beautiful world. If we would but come together in a likeness of, of, of unity, a, a mindset of community and society and, and charity and overcoming, which is lift the people at the bottom and protect the things that were given in truth, in trust. That, that that society, that world can be changed and shaped and grow. That's the bride that Christ will come for. That's the mountain that covers the whole earth. Can I trust you? Do you? Yeah, I've got a cross and a Bible. Yeah, but can I trust you? I I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came. I declare to speak in truth in all things. Can I trust you? Yes. Okay. Can I trust you? You can, but maybe not with this. Maybe I have difficulty with that. Truthful, but directed towards that charity, and that's the, the church leadership constantly. That Christ is the head. What did he say? Do. Give to the poor, heal the sick, raise the dead, heal the blind cause the blind to see to do what he did have a heart for the orphan and the widow promote strength uh, uh, in marriage community and society and family above the, accuma the, ac the accumulation of wealth And all these things will be given to you that you still feel rich. What makes a man rich? I can I can testify, uh, being able to sit in one place and look at another place you can go and sit that's yours. That's home. It doesn't have to be a, a mansion, but a space to live in that I'm safe in, that I can cook in. Eat, share, break bread. There's water that's, you know, access to water that's drinkable. <coughs> Food that's nourishing. It's doable. The world's abundant. And able to, to, to produce. If we, if we manage the seas, if we manage the land, if we manage the livestock. What are we struggling for? If we stop shooting each other and blowing each other up, how much, how much do we need to, to fire rockets into space? The millions and billions. How much do we need to, 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 you know, invest in blowing each other up in new and different ways? How much? You know, do we need to research and, 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 and look at breaking apart matter in order to provide power when the sun presides, you know, more in an hour than we need on Earth? Each second. If we really set our minds, can we not harvest that energy? That free, burning, continual source of energy and power and bring that to the people bring that to our you know 
Can with our communications, can we not come together in choices and understanding and information? Oh Christ, it's all there, it's all there. It's all the way God has placed these things in our hands. We no longer have the ownership of the earth. We still have the stewardship. We still live here. We're still part of this society. And in our freedom to choose, we can we can help. We can cleanse. We can stop producing so many plastics. We can stop producing so many wasteful and dangerous products and using them and putting them in front of people to use. If we can share a system of belief, a recipe for life that, that fulfills our lack. And that's the Church of Carpe Cruxis. Bible believing. It, 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 it's inerrant. Inerrant. There aren't any, God doesn't make mistakes. In that interpretation over the years, there have been people who, who, for one reason or another, will interpret things a different way. Is it possible to sort through them? Is it possible that there's actually only one way? If we if we continually go back to the Bible and say, but Lord, is it this? Will he show us? Do I need to be in fancy dress to come and preach the gospel? Do I need to sacrifice? What God says is you need to commune. We need to commune. We need to live together. And in that communion is, is blessing and glory and, and, and a sense of belonging and hope and guidance and trust and peace that amazes, that is able to carry us through, that, that, that connects us to that flow. And when we're in that flow, it's incredible. And yes, we, we also need those checkpoints and places to say when we live in abundance, do we still look to God? Or do we start to say, oh, I did such a good job there. It all comes from Him. Fifty-eight minutes. Well, it's been foggy and cloudy in Wuhan for quite a while. And look, look what the Lord's done. I mean to spend some time in the things. This is a strange burden to overcome. It's a strange challenge to live in and time to live in. It takes its toll. My relationships, my family, connections. Uh, we have an enemy. We are in a fight. It's a spiritual battleground. And yet there's a love to share and experience, which is, transcends all of the loves. There's a beauty. Once again, the Israelites felt the Lord's anger. When he incited David against them and gave him orders that Israel and Judah should be counted. So he instructed Joab and the officers of the army with him to go round all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and make a record of the people and report the number to him. Joab answered, even if the Lord your God should increase the people a hundredfold and your majesty should live to see it, what pleasure would it that give your majesty? But Job and the officers were overruled by the king, and they left his presence in order to count the people. 
they crossed the Jordan and began to began at Aroa and the level land of that gorge proceeding towards Gad and Jazza and they came to Gilead and to the land of the Hittites to Kadesh and then to Dan and Eon and so round towards Sidon they went as far as the walled city of Tyre and all the towns of the Hivites and the Canaanites and went on to the Negeb of Judah at Beersheba. They covered the whole country and arrived back at Jerusalem after nine months and twenty days. Job reported to the king that the total number of the people, the number of able-bodied men capable of bearing arms was 800,000 in Israel and 500,000 in Judah. Wow. David doubted God's ability to deliver him. And maybe today I'm a little like that. Or a lot like that. Maybe that's why I've been hidden. With hiding myself. Fear is... the enemy of a believing Christian and to fear and to doubt when shown when told when revealed when blessed This is a sin against God. So, my message this week, if there is such a thing, other than the founding of Carpe Cruxis on the Bible, to achieve be the white stone that comes out the feet of iron and clay to cover the whole world the, the, the Bible the, the, the church of, of rightness of if not perfection but at least rightness before God is it given these messages over the past few weeks whatever the weather camera works inside as well as outside I've preached from bus stops and to go on in hope and journey in hope and, and this week to look at what hope means a hope in the fulfilment of God's word that he may be glorified that we may be reconciled that we can come back into relationship with him and then pass through that final trial to to the life everlasting to overcome that enemy to stand uprightly and in a mature way not issuing the innocence of, of childhood rather embracing the whole embracing the bigger picture the, the wider community and society the, the, the folly of standing in our own strength and the, and the simple joy of receiving salvation from the God who loves us who's loved us from the beginning who sat with us in our mother's womb it's beautiful and worthy of praise adoration honour, respect obedience and that's my prayer for you this week for the ministers to address hope as a subject for the congregants to be encouraged to step forth to be soothed by an apology 
and strengthened that, that even the great amongst us are but servants only measured how we serve God it's all all I call for pastor priest chief this the ex just I want to be a servant of God I'm, be a servant of God that's my hope that's my focus my attention even in the times of darkness even in the times of not going to fulfill my role and duties as the founder of this church I'm still in the background struggling and fighting and standing to serve God in the best of my ability to provide that to my community to provide that to my society to provide that to my family into my relationships as broken as this rubble is on the ground as, it, as they are and God may be glorified edified or not reviled in Jesus' name Amen I find myself in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene I wonder how he could love me A sinner condemned unclean How marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall ever be How marvelous, how wonderful Is my Savior's love for me he took my sins and my sorrows, He made them His very own. He bore my burdens to Calvary, And suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, And my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, He said, not my will but thine. He spared no thoughts for his own griefs, But sweat clots of blood for mine. Who is like him? How marvelous, how wonderful, And my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory, His face I at last shall see. It will be my joy through the ages. I choose a corner in the house of the Lord over the kingdom of men. To sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Take that heaviness. Praises be to his name. May you be blessed and uh, know 
his presence in your life this week may the glory of God go before you may the spirit of God be within you may the herald of God ever ring within your ears may Jesus you walk with Jesus may you commune with Jesus who has paid such a price for you and know your value and blessing and peace and truth in Jesus name I pray Amen onwards and upwards he be healed of every sickness may your every care be attended to in the places of fight may you be established and know his victory through the proclamations made in Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18 glory hallelujah glory amen <laughs>